Hello game developers and welcome back to Let's Make Pong. This will be episode 6. And when we last left off, we had just finished implementing input polling for our keyboard so that we can move our paddles around. And so this episode I want to get paddle collision and response working. Um, we're going to look at bouncing the ball off the paddles. And we're also going to look at changing the, the angle that the ball reflects off the paddles based on where it hits them. That'll introduce some skill into the game, make it a little bit more dynamic, but let's go ahead and get into it here. Now the way we're going to detect collision with the ball and the paddle is by using a method that the rectangle class provides called overlaps. All it does is it takes a re another rectangle as a perimeter and returns a boolean telling us if they overlap. Uh, so that will detect the general collision, and then we'll kind of fine-tune that a little bit to um, determine if it's the kind of collision that we want. Because we're only going to worry about the front face of the paddle colliding with the ball. Um, it should never collide with the back of it once we implement scoring. And if it, it, it could... Um, overlap and collide with the tops and bottom of the paddle and we could handle the collision of those and respond but I think instead if, if it hits it in such a way that we can't count it as a front facing collision then we'll just let it pass on and count as a miss so shouldn't come up too often enough for it to be a big problem but we'll do that by doing the uh, get bounds so we'll get the, the bounding rectangle for the ball and then we'll call the overlaps method but um, the rectangle class does provide the contains method that you can pass in another rectangle to, and that'll just tell you if the rectangle you're, you're testing contains completely the other rectangle. Um, and then it also has the contains method that takes an X and a Y position, and that'll just do a hit test for a specific point. So it'll tell you if that rectangle contains that point, which you can use for like testing bullet hits or a mouse click, something like that. But we'll just be using the overlaps rectangle. And then we're going to pass it in, the get the bounding rectangle for the first paddle. We're just going to do each paddle separately. So we'll go ahead and write that out. Also, an this elf bounds overlaps paddle 2. And that'll cover our cases there. So now we have, we know, so now if this is true, we know that the ball is overlapping our first paddle. So we want to test it to see if it's colliding with the paddle in a way we want. So if we have our paddle here, and then we have our ball. Let's keep that black. There we go. And this is our ball. And it's it's collided with the paddle. It's overlapping, so we know it hit. We only care if it hits this front facing side of the paddle and so we can test that by seeing if the left side of the ball is beyond so less than the uh, right side of the paddle and we want to know if the right side of the ball has not passed the right side of the, of the paddle and that will define the ball hitting the front face in such a way because if the ball say came down and hit the paddle here then this side is past it, but this side is past it also, so we don't want that. And then if it, you know, if it, for some reason if it ever hits back here, same thing. Um, that's not the kind of collision we want to we want to take notice of. So, pretty simple and straightforward. If the left side of the ball is less than or beyond the right side of the pad, that's star star and and if the right side of the ball is not beyond the right side of the paddle then we know it's collided with the paddle we know it's the kind of collision we want so we just need to resolve the collision we need to come in here and resolve this collision we need to pull the ball back out so that it's flush with the paddle it's hard to I don't control my mouse so that's flush with the paddle, so it's no longer colliding, right? So we move the ball, um, move its X position out to the right side of the paddle, 
and we keep the Y position of the ball. And then we reflect on the x-axis, and that should do it. Let's test it here. We're going to change this so the ball comes at us, so we don't have to wait forever for it to bounce around the field. And uh, I, I learned through testing of my own that you don't have to do this. It'll take a negative angle just fine and deal with it. So let's do a negative 135 angle to get it bouncing back towards us at a 45. And we'll test it for paddle one here. See if it hits and bounces. It does. Bounces, comes down. Doesn't collide there, of course. And we'll just test it again, make sure. Bounces, hits, we're good. As you can see, whenever it collides, it keep, the ball keeps that angle. It doesn't actually change, so there's not much skill involved there. You can easily predict where your opponent's gonna hit the ball and where it's gonna come to you. So, we will change that. I lost my place. There we go. So we're going to do the same thing for uh, Paddle 2. Just flipped. So we're going to test to make sure the right side of the ball is greater than the uh, left side of the paddle. And we want to make sure that the left side of the ball is less than the left side of the paddle. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll move the ball out to resolve the collision. And um, we left. We got to offset it by the width of the ball. Since remember, we're working with rectangles in their bottom left corner. So if we set the ball X position just to adjust to the paddle's left position, it's going to, the ball, the ball will be inside the paddle, which is not what we want. And then ball, get Y, and then reflect, and test. Well, you got to check yourself. You never know when something's going to randomly go wrong that you did not foresee. Yep, that looks good. So now we want to do the, vary, the, the varying angles of reflection, right? And to do that, we need to test where the ball hits the paddle. So if we go back to our demonstration, our, our visualization here, we have our ball coming in and say it hits here. What we want to do is test the center Y position of both the paddle and the ball compare them, get the difference between them, and that'll give us a negative or a positive number, which we then divide by the height of the paddle, because that's, that's the length of our test, right? It can be anywhere up and down the length of that paddle. So dividing by the length, the, the height of the paddle um, normalizes that number, and that'll give us a negative one to a one number. So if the ball winds up hitting up here, that would be a one, if it hits down here, that's a negative one. And if it hits here in the center, that's a zero. And then what we do is multiply that number, that position number, by the maximum angle that we want it to reflect by, say 70, 70 degrees. Um, and that'll give us a negative 70 to a 70 degree angle to reflect the ball back. So say it hits here, the ball will then reflect back in this way. If it hits up here, it'll reflect back in this way, and then everything in between. So, to do that, we'll just do some variables here. Um, you don't have to do this all in like partitioned out in variables, but we'll do it just for clarity's sake. We'll do ball center y equals ball get y plus half the height of the ball, so get height divided by 2, and then we'll do paddle center y equals paddle 1 get y plus paddle 1 get height divided by 2, and then we want the difference between them, so we do, so do we want to do paddle, yeah, we do ball center y 
maximize paddle center y and that'll give us the difference between them so it'll give you a rough position of the ball and then we want to divide the difference of that by the height of the paddle and that'll give us the uh, negative one to one normalized position so we do difference minus paddle one get height and then we have our angle which will be the maximum angle that we want and we'll just do 70, 70 degrees for now times the position and then we set the angle for the current velocity of the ball to that and it will rotate that and we'll be good so if we get the vector uh, velocity for the ball and then we do ball uh, not the ball we do velocity set angle to our angle and then we set that back on the ball that should work so let's test that out doing paddle one here so if it hits on the bottom should bounce back down at a less severe angle. Let's try hitting the middle here and see if we can get it to go straight. Uh, it's a little bit low, so it went down a little. See, so bounce back up there because we were a little bit above the center. Pal two's not doing it. Pal two will just return it as the angle, and we had a more severe hit there. Okay, so that seems to be working. Let's hit it on the top and just make sure. Yep. All right. So let's implement that for the other side. And we'll just do a copy paste. Save us some typing. We do change this to paddle two. Change this to paddle two. That should work. I don't think we need to flip the uh, angle in any way just because we're on the other side because we're just working on the vertical axis, which would be the same. So we'll see. Ooh, yeah, that wasn't good. Uh, that, was, that was a little weird. Yeah, we do need to flip it because of the way the... Uh, set angle works this actually needs to be flipped 180 degrees so just thinking of the best way to do that we need to flip it 180 let's do that let's see if that gets us where we need to go Seems good so far. Bounces back. See if we can hit it in the middle. There we go. Nice straight shot. Straight shot. All right, we got a gain going. Now that ball is moving very, very slow. Oh, I missed. <laughs> um, what we want to do is instead of that ball keeping it's a uh, horizontal velocity throughout the game. We want it to speed up each time it hits a paddle. That way as the game progresses and you hit the paddle more and more, the game's gonna start going faster and faster. So we can do that here when we get the ball velocity, just to do it all at once. And um, just do a separate, we'll use the mall for uh, multiply and we'll use a multiply by a scalar, which is just a, a flat number that it'll multiply the entire vector by instead of like an individual component which you can do with the X and Y which is multiply the whole thing so that'll extend the entire vector by a set amount and we will just multiply it by a percentage let's say uh, five percent every time it hits a paddle uh, let's do ten percent that might be too that, that may be too too fast but we'll see so you just multiply it by one point one so every time it hits it'll speed up by ten percent and we'll do that for each side. See so what difference that makes for us. Ball comes in, 
hits. It's a little bit faster. Hit there a little bit faster. It's really difficult to play against yourself. You always know what you're going to do. Yep, see the ball is gaining more and more speed. It's going to get faster and faster. Now we may set a, a maximum speed on this at some point, but don't need to worry about it too much right now. Right now we're not really playing with numbers. Yeah, and ball's getting crazy now. <laughs> Definitely going to set a maximum speed on this, but we'll, I think we'll worry about that next episode. Um, next episode we're going to do some code cleanup. We're going to work on changing some of these hard set numbers. We'll move those into static variables so that we can change them and manipulate them in a more easy to access, more readable place. And then we'll start working on game states so we can divide the game up into things like new game, reset, playing states so that we can manipulate it and uh, work on scoring. And we'll be about done. So thanks for hanging in there with me. And uh, as always, if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. The code will be on the repository in the description. You can follow me on Twitter, ask me questions, or get in contact, me, get in contact with me there. Um, until next time, thanks for joining me.